Hello and welcome to Eagle Vision Church, the home where visionaries are made. We are so glad that you joined us. Stay connected as we listen to this life-changing and anointed word from Pastor Wilson. Hallelujah. I love God and uh, it's amazing when he begins to speak to us in this way. He's a God who speaks. He's a God who wants to communicate with us. And we need to open our ears that we hear him speaking to us. We need to develop hearing ears so that we can hear from what he wants to say to us. He's a speaking God. Our God is always speaking, but sometimes there is no one wanting to listen. So if we take time, even in our prayers, as we are presenting ourselves on those uh, prayer altars, open your spirit. Have it an understanding that God is speaking and I need to have a hearing ear. And whatever he's going to tell you, do it. Whatever he's going to say to you, do it with all confidence, knowing that Jehovah God has spoken to you. God wants to say some things. And he's speaking things concerning this church, concerning your life, concerning your business. And listen to that voice. Well, today I want to speak from uh, the, the subject, the blessing of Obed Edom. I'd say the blessing of Obed Edom. And I'm believing that this blessing, it will rest upon our homes, our households. It will come upon us and something will take place in this service. I'm believing God that even as we are still battling the COVID pandemic, and all of a sudden, we have this uh, economic meltdown. Not just in this nation, all over the world. You look at that and you say, what is God doing in this season? Or what is God saying with all this which is happening at one go, at our watch? We are almost like, I thank God that God gave us a word uh, when we were talking about the word for 2022. He said the COVID is going to come to an end. Um, and he says actually it will be just like any flu. That's what the word we receive on the 31st of December. But now we, we are seeing that word almost manifesting. But the enemy is not resting. He's coming up with many devices and strategies just to distract us and just to lock us down. But I want us to be very much aware that God is not resting. It appears as if God is silent, but don't be deceived. I want every enemy not to be deceived. That him being silent, it doesn't necessarily that he's not seeing what is happening. He is doing something which is so big behind the scenes. And what he's doing it is about to be released, unlocked, and we we'll begin to see great testimonies coming forth. Why? Because God is doing something, and we might not see it. We might not realize it. We might not even feel it. It is not about feeling. It is about what he is doing. He is doing something behind the scenes. Ours is calling us forth, and I believe this is what he's saying, to remain steadfast, to remain rooted in his word, and in prayer, and in fellowship. And as we remain in those dimensions, he's going to come through for us. And it's a matter of time. He shall not delay, and he'll come forth and he'll deliver you out of that situation. I don't know the situation that you are found in right now, but I believe if you are doing what he is, is ordering us, it's a matter of time. Deliverance is on the way. Help is on the way. He's about to snatch you out of that situation. In fact, um, the Bible says, uh, I believe it's Isaiah uh, 59, his hand is not shortened, that it is not able to deliver. This is not part of the message, but I, I believe this is what God is saying. My message, my notes are not as important as what he's saying to us. 
His hand is not shortened that he is not able to deliver. No, his ear stopped up that he cannot hear. So, what you, the, the cry, he has heard the cry, your cry, the cry of his people. The Bible constantly, you'd say, whenever the Israelites would cry, that cry would rise up to Jehovah. And once he hears that cry, even in their place of sin, even in their place of disobedience, even in their place of being hard-hearted and stiff-necked, he would raise up a deliverer. And he would take his people out of captivity and out of bondage. We are still serving the same God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is going to deliver you out of that situation. Is going to take you out of that situation. It's a matter of time. You and I, we need just to wait upon the Lord. Be still. Be still. David tells us, be still and know that I am the Lord. Yes, these things are happening. But God is engineering certain things behind the scenes. It's a matter of time. You shall see him breaking through for you. And you come to a place where you're saying, I've realized the breakthrough of the Lord. And you know him as the master of breakthroughs. You come to your bow parism, the master of breakthrough. He's breaking through like the bridge of waters. And you are going to see doors opening supernatural. And I believe this is what he's saying. Hallelujah. So it's time for us to be resolute. To be steady fast, to remain in faith, not to shift our positions. Hallelujah. It's time that we begin to invite Jesus in your boat. This could be your business or your family. Invite the Lord. Invite the Messiah, the anointed one, son of the living God. Because it's only him who is able to keep your boat afloat. As we are experiencing whatever we are experiencing right now. As long as Jesus is in your boat, you'll be able to keep that boat afloat. Hallelujah. And as he's also causing us to have communion, strong fellowship, with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a strategist. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. The Holy Spirit is a counselor. He's also our comfort. He's, he's everything that we need. But in this season, I believe He's going to give us strategies and ideas. You whisper something that will be a game changer in your business, in your family. That strategy, it might appear simple. We just had the testimony here. Someone was saying, a pastor is saying, do not borrow, do not have loans, but I need to raise this amount, huge amount, to buy stuff for my house. But he's testifying right now. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, he can whisper an idea. He can give you a strategy. That strategy, it will supersede that which is happening, even with a, an economy of a nation. Hallelujah. So it's key for us to hear that strategy, which is a game changer, that will change everything, that will cause this thing to incline towards your victory. So listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit. He will speak to you. He will guide you. He will lead you. In fact, the Bible teaches us that you will hear a voice behind you telling that this is the way. Walk ye in it. Do not turn to the left. Do not turn to the right. Straight ahead, march. And we need to be opening our spiritual ears to hear him guiding us every step. Ladies and gentlemen, let us not come to a place where we think that we know. Let's all come to a place where we become children. 
where you, you say in ministry, Lord, I don't know anything about ministry work. But here I am, I'm pastoring, shepherding your great people. How will you lead me? Guide me. Show me the ropes. Go before me. Those that are in business, it's good that we have information that are there, that is available in our books, in, uh, from other people. The experience we have is good, fantastic. But in this season, desire more. Empty yourself and say, God, where we are operating now, I need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And as you call him with an open heart, with no deceit, he will show you a way. And that way to bring you to a place of knowing him even better. And not just knowing him, but it will be a place where you begin to know success. Not according to human definition, but to the definition of the spirit. He wants you to be successful. Hallelujah. So, in this season, I believe desire just to keep your business above the water. If you do that, you'll be amazed. Remember I said he's doing something behind the scenes. There will come a time that there will be such an acceleration and progression in that vision. Do not be deceived. Sometimes we think that being in one place, but we are in that place because of a voice of God, because of an instruction from heaven. Do not be mistaken that thing to be like you are stagnated. It's a set up for a forward motion and progression and acceleration that cannot be defined by a human mind. So there are certain things that appear stand still, but there is so much force that is behind that will cause a progression that cannot be accounted for in the natural. But you have to trust God. And to believe God. Because most of the times we are all over the show and we don't get to do much because we are trying to do things in our own strength, in our own power. And we can achieve certain things. But God, sometimes when you allow him to be God in a situation, he takes you even higher. And he will surprise even your enemies. And I believe God is about to do that. And God is doing that in this season. There is a new season on the horizon. Look out. Open your eyes. See. So don't give up. Don't give up. A season of great abundance is coming. Now, before the great abundance, we might experience food shortages. All over the world, we might be headed for food shortages. But as we see these things, us who are children, sons of Issachar, they knew times and seasons and what Israel ought to do, the Bible says. So as we see the lack and the shortages of stuff, ours is not to panic as children of God. Because God is speaking ahead of time so that you and I, we can be prepared. We have a mind that is prepared for that which is ahead. And not only a mind that is prepared, but also God gives us strategies so that we, are, we will be able to take care of ourselves because we will be prepared for that event because we know that it is not just going to last forever it is more like what he revealed to Joseph that there are seasons of abundance 
a season of abundance is coming for, but it will last just for a season. But there will be also a season of drought that will come. But as you obey the instruction, as you prepare, as you trust God, you'll be able to see the hand of God even in a place where there is drought. And indeed, many nations were fed because one man chose to trust God. And some of you, may God lift you up that you cause many to be fed because you are listening to the voice of Jehovah. That many of you, you rescue many families because you are hearing from God. So let's not panic. But let us walk in wisdom. Hallelujah. This is why I'm so excited about this message today. I believe God is giving us wisdom and strategy for days ahead. And he's speaking to us and he's guiding us. Now I want us to know that God wants to bless his people. And he wants to bless you. He wants to bless me. And that blessing of the Lord, it makes a person stand out. Everyone will notice that there is something special on you once the blessing of God rests upon you. This blessing, it distinguishes you. It sets you apart. So in this season, there are certain people that God is setting apart. And people can see that there is something special about you. So I want you to see how you can get this blessing from the Lord. Because there is a prescribed way. His blessings, they are conditional. His love for us, for all of us here, is not conditional. He loves all of us. But for his blessings, there are conditions and there are things, there are commands that we need to obey. And uh, I want us to see some of that from the word of God so that we don't just do it haphazardly or through osmosis. Second Samuel chapter 6, verses 10 to 12. Scripture says, So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. It's amazing that last week we extended our building project, the 55K building project, uh, for the next three months. So we're here, and I like it. Three months, the ark was in the house of Obed Edom. So I believe in these three months, God is about to do something in our families and in this church. Scripture continues, and the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. So the blessing is not just to rest upon one person. And all his household. Now it was told King David, saying, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with gladness. Listen to me. You, you can put your life in danger if you are to send an envoy or people to the palace and tell them something which is not... A, a, a national or a matter of uh, high magnitude. Hallelujah. I know of a man who uh, once invited the president to his party, but uh, he used to be, I think he, his business was, no, it was a shady, shady deals and things like that. And the president sent forth the intelligence to, to check out the man. And uh, because of that, he suffered a lot. Amen. So you don't just get to send messages to the palace. You know, 
Because you have to know how you position yourself with kings. Glory be to God. So anyway, here, but people, they are seeing that there is something peculiar happening in the house of Obed-Edom. And they said, the king must know that which is happening. And by the way, this king is not like any other king. He is a king who is very much prosperous. He is loaded. David is loaded. So he will not be moved by breadcrumbs. He will not be moved by little things. So indeed, this blessing, it was powerful. That it caused the king to leave his palace and to see what, is, what was happening in the house of Obed-Edom. May kings leave their palaces to check out what you are doing as a company, to check out the things that you are, uh, you are doing uh, in that vision that God has given you, that they will not remain in the palace. They will hear about your exploits. They will hear about great things that you are doing, and they will be drawn by those things, and they will come, and they will see that indeed there is something that is peculiar that is happening in your company. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible tells us that the people who know their God, Daniel speaking, Daniel eleven thirty two, the people who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do mighty, mighty exploits. You are the people who know their God and we decree and declare that you are about to do mighty exploits. That even those that are in authority, they will know that you are doing a great work. That you are doing something which is major. And they will come and see. And some of you, there are things that will call forth the presidium to come and uh, officially open things that will happen. Maybe not in your generation, but your children, your children's children, some of them along the, this, your bloodline, it will be done because the word of God is coming forth into your life, into that assignment that God has given you. And that, it will cause you to be set apart and you do great things for God. Hallelujah. So, before I go even into the message today, I want us to be conscious of the presence of God surrounding us all the time. Most of the times, because we are not aware of the glory that surrounds us, we preach, we preach merely sometimes even powerful messages, and you are not even aware of things happening on the altar. And you don't take advantage of transitioning the church into the realms of the spirit where certain things can be bad in the realm of the spirit because we are not conscious of that which is happening. Ladies and gentlemen, we are surrounded by the glory of God. Even when you think you are down, the glory is surrounding you because you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are his chosen one. And because of that, there is a glory that surrounds you. So I want us to get ready for the next three months. I call them three months of destiny. From July to September, something unique, peculiar should happen. should take place in your life and in this church as well. Now coming back to our story that I just read you, Obed. That name, it means servant of the Lord. And we have to understand that names are destinies. They are not just merely names. So I believe this man was a servant of the Lord. In fact, to accept the ark in his home shows that he understood about serving. He was a servant. He was a bond servant. Julos in Greek. D-U-L-O-U-S. A bond servant is someone who saves others by volunteering. It is out of their willingness to serve. It is not like forced labor. Or you are more like a slave. No. 
he willingly said. I like what David says, that in the day of his power, is it Psalm 110? In the day of his power, he will make people volunteers. Now, we don't get to see many volunteers in church, volunteers in the work of God, because maybe there's no more so much power. But when his power comes, people will volunteer. When the power of God invades your space in your business, invades your space in your ministry, you will have many people who have got a spirit of willingness. That power, it will cause people to have a willing heart. Willing heart to serve your vision. Willing heart to advance your vision in that organization and in that business and in that ministry. So that's the spirit that this man had. And that was his name, Obed. Hallelujah. So, he, this was his disposition of serving the Lord. And I believe some of you, for years, you have been serving the Lord. That's why I'm confident that in the next three months, according to his word, you are going to see miracles. You are going to see breakthroughs. You are going to see wonders in your life. Why? Because you have been serving the Lord and he has been watching and he has been recording all those great things that we are doing for him. Your labor was not in vain. Your labor was not in vain. Hallelujah. I believe it's, it should be Isaiah 49. He says, I've served the Lord in vain, but yet my reward is with the Lord. He's the one who is going to Reward me is a Lord of recompenses in my life. Hallelujah. I believe some of you, you have saved, but the Lord of recompenses, the Lord who rewards, is about to reward you right now. Get ready for that reward. He's not an unjust God that he forgets the works, the labor, the devotion, how we have been set apart as a people who are serving in the house of God. Surely, he's going to bless you and bless that which is also of your household. Hallelujah. So he just took that ark willingly, willingly. And he is housed the ark, the ark of covenant. The presence, because the ark represented the presence of God. Something shifted. And some of you, the presence of God is about to be honored in your home. And as you are honoring the presence of God, as you are honoring God in your house, that honor, that reverence, it is about to change things in your family. Hallelujah. Let's give him a clap offering for that. It is said, Obed Edom was from a poor background. Poor. Americans, they say Paul. He was not coming from a well-to-do family at all. He was not fed with that silver spoon. He knew poverty. He knew lack. But somehow, constantly, diligently, faithfully, he was serving. He was a man who understood the aspect of serving. So as you keep serving the Lord, your life will change. I'm here to give you this understanding. You are going to be transformed because you know how to serve God. Do not be discouraged because you might not be seeing results now. But keep serving faithfully. God will do it. I said, God will do it. The Bible says, him who calls you is faithful and he will do it. And I declare he's going to do it. Hallelujah. From being a poor man, Obed Edom became a prosperous man because he accommodated the ark of the covenant in his home. Who are you accommodating in your home? Is God 
given a space. I had something that, which was powerful and it, it has caused me to pray a certain prayer. Because I had Dr. Francis Miles teaching that as much as we're teaching about orders and I didn't have this revelation and I was busy telling people have an order, have an order, have an order in your home, at your workplace, in your car, have an order. Then I got to understand that the altar in your home, it should be a space, a room that is only dedicated, set apart for God. Nobody sleeps there. Nobody eats in there. Nobody plays in there. Because it is a special room. And I looked at myself and said, I don't have that room. It's, it was not a revelation to say, oh my. Uh, it, is, it was something to say, God, did you hear that? And I made a request unto God. And I said, I want that. Not for me, but for you. And I believe God has had the prayer. So some of you, maybe you have got many rooms. Or you don't have, like me. But it's a prayer that we can pray to say, God, just for you, we want to accommodate you. I want you to be part of my household. I want you to come and tabernacle in my home, in my house. And this room, I'll dedicate it unto you. And I don't just do anything in that room or, or do operate anyhow. It's set apart. They want that. Now, since I don't have that, I'm not go going to be waiting. God must see my desperation and my steadfastness in that and my revelation concerning that. I wake from what I have now. You catch up with me. <laughs> And I'm building my altar now. And it's a place where I'm praying to God. Where I'm worshipping God. Where I'm opening my ears to hear what he's saying to you. I, I challenge you again. Have that place too. Hallelujah. Because that place, it will change your life. Praise the Lord. So we see that he accommodated the act, the presence of the Lord in his own. And some of you, the way you host cell groups, open your eyes. You are doing something major. It's a place, it's a center that God is marking. That it is like a city light in that place where there is a spiritual activity, spiritual activity happening. Why? You, are, you have opened your home for God to do his work. And it's not an, an, a simple thing that you have done. It is honorable before God. And it opens things in the realm of the spirit and literally you can begin to believe that you have an open heaven in your home Amen. begin to pray that this is this place it's a portal it's a gate of god it's a platform it's a power station that i can do certain things for god and if you do that out of revelation you begin to see that certain things will shift because of your revelation and your understanding. So is God well received and honored in your home? God's presence in your household, it changes things. Certain sicknesses go. Misfortunes go. Cases they go in his presence. Poverty it goes. In the presence of God. Confusion it goes. Some of these depressions and everything. They flee in his presence. God. Listen to me. God is a jealous God. He cannot be dwelling in the same place. With the adversary. With the devil living in the same room. So one must vacate. And one must remain occupying the place. So as you begin to realize that I, I reverence God and we, we, we have a dedicated place for him here and he's welcome here. Know it very well that certain things they just go. They will leave you. They go elsewhere. 
Because that place is occupied by God. But it's in serving him. It's in worship. Hallelujah. So as you repair your altar of prayer and worship, receive wisdom from above and strategies in business. As you walk in God's presence, may debt be cancelled in your life. May you experience overflow and abundance because you are serving the Lord. I close with this scripture and we'll pray and there are certain things that we want to activate because shortly, yes, there's an open heaven here, but we now want to enter into the realms of the spirit in closing and praying in certain things into our lives and God will move. Second Kings chapter 4 verses 1 to 2 from NIRV version. Scripture says, The wife of a man from the group of the prophets cried out to Elisha. She said, My husband is dead. You know how much respect, <laughs> you know how much respect he had for the Lord. May someone in your household be known as someone who respects God. In fact, let me rephrase it. May the priest in your home be a priest who respects God. Because you need it sometime. After it's gone, that respect might rescue your family. You know how much respect he had for the Lord. But he owed money to someone. He was not taught in EVC about borrowing. So he went on and he borrowed. So he was not taught. So anyway, he borrowed. And now, because of that borrowing, the person is coming to take my two boys away. They will become his slaves. Imagine a mother knowing that, oh, my boys, when they are taken, they are not going to be converted into business people. They are not going to be converted into pastors. They are not going to be converted into uh, engineers or into a pilot. No, they are actually, they are coming for them so that they can only be one thing, and that is to be a slave. A mother carrying this child nine months and knowing that two of them they are now to be taken. Imagine the, the feeling. But she, she, she had a, a, a landing strip. She had a power station because of what the husband did. Now watch this. What the, watch what the power station does. Because we were teaching you that an altar is a power station and it's a landing strip and it's a place of exchange. Watch now the exchange which is about to happen. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Imagine the feeling. I told you about the feeling. Then you went to an apostle, a prophet, and you tell them your problem, and they said, how can I help you? <laughs> how can I help you? Tell me. Now it starts. Tell me. Then it changes everything. What do you have in your house? I don't have anything there at all. She said, all I have is a small jar of olive oil. And the man of God says, yes, you see it as small, but you don't know that there's an altar in your home because of the service of your husband. And because of that, there can be an exchange that the little olive oil that you have, it can be exchanged that the children will not be taken away as slaves. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't underestimate and don't be deceived when people laugh at you coming to church every Sunday, serving every Sunday, that it is precious before God. And if someone knows of a history, like this woman, she knew the history, 
somebody can demand, place a demand, and call upon the name of Yeshua, and something will shift in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. So, something happened. So I want to say to you, your service to the Lord is not in vain. You serve a faithful God. He sees all your labor of love. He sees it. He sees it. And it's well noted. The book of Revelation reveals that there are books of works in heaven. So apparently, as much as people may be, they might not come and acknowledge our service and our devotion. But the one that you are serving has got a book in heaven. He said, if you read closely, I believe it's uh, chapter 2, chapter 3. He said something like this. I know your works. He's talking to churches that I know your ch works as a church because it's written there. I know it. Some of you have a little strength but you have not denied my name. Some of you, I know even where you live that Satan has got a seat in your city but there is something that you do and because of that I've, I've taken note. I've taken note. So some of you, you have served with difficulty. Some of you, you come here maybe without even eating because you, are, you have to be early to sweep, to arrange chairs, to do something. And he says, I know. I know that you have been coming with an empty stomach to serve everyone. But I've taken note of that. I know your works. I know your works. Your works are before the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. This woman knew that her husband was a righteous man. And she withdrew from his account as she made a request. I want to pose a question. Will your wife be able to make a withdrawal? after everything has been said and done and maybe you are gone, is there an investment that maybe your family will be preserved because of that investment? Make that investment. Let me speak to some of us who have been serving here. I want to encourage you in closing. Do not be wary. Serving faithfully. Keep serving faithfully. You might feel like I'm weary right now. I'm tired. And you might be actually be the enemy can trap you in coming into a place where you say I don't get to see much. In fact, those that are not going to church, they are having testimonies. Watch. Have you seen the conclusion of the matter? David says, I almost slept when I watched and looked at the evil. How they appeared as if they don't suffer. They were just testifying. They would have breakthroughs. But I almost slept because I was watching. But God helped me that he took me to the end of their story and I saw the destruction thereof and the emptiness and the voidness of their lives that they were empty as shoe boxes but it appeared in the natural as if they were the people so that revelation it has stabilized me that yes they appear as if they are prosperous but I know the conclusion of the matter Hallelujah. So even us, let us not be wearied by the boastful. Be encouraged that you are doing the right thing. Even if you are not seeing anything, just do the right thing. Just do what Jehovah has asked you to do. It is okay. But this God is a righteous God. 
he will not just watch. He will be greatly rewarded. The God of recompenses, he will reward you for your good works and for the things that you are doing for him and his people. So remain planted in the house of God. Keep serving. Keep serving God. Keep serving his people. The, there will come a time that God will reward you. As God is pouring his anointing upon you, even in this new season that he has ushered us into, may debt be cancelled. That debt was cancelled supernaturally. The boys preserved. No more taken. Some of us who have debts, may God remember the good works and things that we have done for him. And may he supernaturally cancel those debts in your life. Scarcity must be broken in your life. Lack, it should be a thing of the past. Spirit of poverty should be broken in your bloodline. May there be an overflow and let there be abundance in your life. That this, from your mouth, it will be more of abundance, overflow, abundance, overflow, breakthroughs. That will be words that will be coming from your mouth. May there be joy unspeakable. Because if you are a servant of the Lord, he says, save him joyfully. We need to save him joyfully that the joy of the Lord will become your strength. Something happens when you serve God. Joy comes. Joy unspeakable. And some of you, that joy is coming because you've been serving the Lord. May there be joy unspeakable in your household. Hallelujah. So, I want us to also house the presence of God in our homes. And as we do so, a blessing that comes that within three months, three months, your position shifts. That it's not only you who is saying you are blessed, it's your neighbors. We are saying, oh, oh. We know the uncle, we know his father, but this level of success, we have never seen it in the bloodline. Surely there is something, and the king should come and inspect what's happening. People should actually come and say what is happening here in your life and in the next few months to come. They cannot afford just to talk about it. It should be heard in high places, in high offices, because of the doing of the Lord. Stay connected with us on our online platforms. Please like and share our Facebook page at Eagle Vision Church Sim. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Eagle Vision Media. Follow us on Instagram at Eagle Vision Church and visit us upstairs at Frank Gumman House, number 101, Herbert Chitepo Street, Mutare.